Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the last Thursday of the month, which means it's time for Vegan Conversations with Robert Cheek. Please welcome him back to the show. Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. What are you doing today? Hey, Chef AJ, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a busy weekend. I am here with family. We're hosting. We tend to host every year now because my brother and sister-in-law and niece and nephew live about an hour away in Denver. So they come here for two nights and three days of absolute chaos because the kids are ages six and eight and their favorite activity in the world is wrestling Uncle Robert. <laughs> Um, he, he's big, strong, powerful, and it's knocking him over is the most fun thing in the world. So I, I look at those bruises bet, I, right now. I bet you're a really fun uncle. I am as fun as it gets. I do all the voices, the characters. I just took them to the Lego Festival Brick Fest with thousands of people with these Lego creations and helped them build a race car and race it. And uh, yeah, I... I pride myself on being one of the most fun uncles in the world as a title that I uh, probably like more than being a New York Times bestselling author, to be honest. I was going to say, do they know that about you? That is so cool. Well, I, I, what are you I, What are you serving or what are you making? What are you eating? We have all, all the usual stuff within the vegan Thanksgiving. We've got the loaves, various type, the field roast, the tofurkey. We've got the my favorite mashed potatoes. Yeah, probably your favorite too, mashed potatoes <laughs> with some gravy. We have some bread rolls, which is a family tradition. Uh, we've got greens, the um, kind of grilled or whatever they're called, the uh, uh, the roasted uh, Brussels sprouts. Yes. Uh, yeah, I make it's a- It's like we're having the same dinner almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Should we just pass the plate? Can you yeah. pass through the computer yeah. here? Nice. Well, who have you got on the show for us today? I have an absolutely wonderful guest today. I'm so honored. She's one of my favorite people, actually, and a tremendous role model for me and someone I've had the opportunity to work with and tour with and attend major events with. And uh, it's Dr. Daphne Bascom, MD, PhD, and the lead coach at The Vegan Gym. And she is just an incredible person, and I'm so honored to have her on the show. She's incredibly busy, and so uh, she carved out time today to make it. So Daphne, welcome to the show. Robert, Chef AJ, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like I need to call you Do Dr. Baskin. I, yeah. I, we have this, you know, we know each other, we hang out, we work together, we go to the gym together, and I, you know, it's kind of casual. I call you Daphne, but you are a medical doctor. In fact, you're a surgeon. Um, everybody wants to know your, your vegan origin story, your background story, your fitness journey story, but I'm actually really interested in knowing your medicine journey first, if you don't mind sharing that, because you have a bio that we don't have time uh, on this show to read. It's so long, <laughs> um, from all your different, uh, areas of specialty in the world of medicine. So can you kind of walk us down that journey, and then we'll go into your fitness background and, of course, your, your vegan origin story. Robert, thank you for asking. Um, I am one of those kids that wanted to be a doctor from age of five. When you receive one of those little doctor or nurse kits under the Christmas tree, and they had the Smarties, and that really sparked my interest. But I knowing that this is Thanksgiving, I am grateful for having had encouraging parents and wonderful mentors throughout my whole journey. I started my career as a biologist, so studied biology. And after finishing my PhD, was fortunate to matriculate into the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And I did my medical school at UPMC. And it was there where I was exposed to otolaryngology or ENT, ear, nose, and throat. And so uh, proceeded to do my residency in ear, nose, and throat. So four years of medical school, five years of residency, and then did a fellowship in head and neck reconstructive surgery before going on faculty in, in the city of Cleveland at Case University Hospitals. Wow, that is, that is incredible. And thank you for also sharing what you're thankful for. I, wa I, I wanted to start with that. I got I got excited having you as a guest, but everyone listening, uh, think about the things that you are thankful for. And of course, happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate. And we're so grateful to have you here. 
Dr. Bascom or Coach Daphne, as I as I call you. Uh, now, what about your fitness journey? I mean, if I understand it correctly, I mean you're a, you're you've been a, a pro athlete, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you can correct me. At, uh, within the world of bodybuilding, I've seen you do like 15 straight pull-ups. You've did a a 10 minute wall set, which by the way, most people won't last one minute. Go ahead and give it a try. Everybody listening, maybe Thanksgiving is a good way to do that. Good time to do that. Um, did, did, have I seen you do like more than 50 push ups at a time? I mean, you, you do some incredible athletic feats. What is your, what is your fitness story? Uh, Robert, you are an amazing inspiration to all of us. So I think my fitness story is partly so that I can help do what you do, which is I aspire to inspire people. And part of it is just knowing that it's possible. So my journey started, my, I've always been into fitness in that I would go to the gym, I would work out, I would get on the cardio machine. Uh, I'd say in my forties, when I was working for a healthcare IT company, and I was on the road almost every week. I developed some nutritional and behavior habits that weren't in my best interest. And for my 40th birthday, I treated myself to some personal training. And my personal trainer was a professional figure competitor. And after training with her for a couple of weeks and seeing her train some other athletes, she said, do you wanna give it a try? And I said, sure. And that started a decade long journey into uh, physique competitions. So I competed in figure and was blessed to be, to re obtain my pro card as a professional figure competitor. So I've competed on the stage in pro figure, pro bikini. And I, my last time on the stage was right before the pandemic, but I really just want to be an example for women of all ages, I'm 57 years old now, that you can do a 10 minute wall sit, you can do 50 plus push ups, you can do 15 pull ups. It's over time. It's nothing that I was able to do day one. But they're gaining muscle being strong. That's my goal. I want to live long and be healthy. And part of that is moving my body and retaining my muscle as the ages as the years tick by but I don't feel a year over 30. Well, you are an amazing role model, Coach Daphne, and you have set some incredible uh, standards for many of us to aspire to. For example, just for perspective, for everyone listening, I was considered the world's most recognized vegan bodybuilder for a decade. I only competed as an amateur level. I never turned pro. Daphne was a pro in multiple categories. My longest wall set was just a couple of days ago a little bit over six minutes. And I was like, not just grimacing, but almost screaming, getting through it. And you almost doubled that time. Uh, the same day that you did 15 pull-ups, which was a fundraiser for Farm Sanctuary. We raised a, a dollar for every pull-up done. And collectively as a whole event, we we did over 3,500 pull-ups with a large crowd. Yeah, at a vegan festival. You did 15, I did five. So, uh, and, and then your, your push-ups, I felt pretty good when I did 35. But I think what's important is that we don't necessarily have to compare ourselves to one another. We, you can be, you said that I was an inspiration through some of the stuff that I do as a marketer, promoter of this lifestyle, writing best-selling books and hosting the show and touring. And you've been an incredible role model and inspiration for, for me and not only me, but so many others. In, in fact, my, my wife is always showing me, look what, look what Coach Daphne just did, 10 minutes on the wall set. And uh, she is incredibly blessed, I think is a word you used, fortunate. She's so thankful that you that you were actually her coach um, and she's dropped 10 pounds in a very short period of time. You inspired me to join the Vegan Gyms program, the Vegan Superhero Academy, the VSA program. I was hesitant. We'll talk about that a little bit later, the re all the reasons why. Uh, not skeptical, but hesitant. And uh, you told me just to just jump in with just both feet. Do it. You got to just do it. <clears throat> quit putting this off, Robert. Quit making excuses. And I'm down uh, 15, nearly 20 pounds already working with Coach Daniel, who's in South Africa. We work through uh, through Zoom and through video, kind of like this. And so uh, you've been an outstanding uh, role model for so many, including within the, the the vegan gym community. People just look up to you and, and we're so, so grateful to have you as part of the community. And on that note, 
what is your vegan story? So what, what's your vegan journey? And then we're going to get to a day in the life uh, of Dr. Mm-hmm. Daphne Bascom, where you talk about your nutrition intake, your exercise, how you're able to balance. You've already had six or seven work calls today. You've got one immediately after this interview and it's during the holiday season. So tell me about your <laughs> vegan journey uh, before we move on. Uh, Robert, thank you for asking. I think I am similar to many other professionals that you have interviewed over the years. And I did not start out my life as a vegan. I knew nothing about, I I would probably say I learned nothing about nutrition in medical school, but through working through the YMCA for several years where um, I was able to learn a lot about health and nutrition and I was introduced to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. I had a early pre-screening of the Game Changers. This was before it was released. And after seeing that, it was a no-brainer. Um, the evidence is incontrovertible. I was a little bit, I was a lot frustrated and angry that I really had not realized the health implications of being plant-based. But it it actually got worse when I, you know, so I started for health reasons. And then as I lifted up the covers and started understanding more about the ethics of what the food industry is doing, our compassion for animals, the impact on the environment, I dove deep. And um, so it was the game changers that really changed the trajectory of my of my life and how I show up in the world. So it really was a game changer for you. It was a game changer. <laughs> you could say that. So I know people want to know. I know I want to know. And people already heard about your background, your fitness professional background, your medicine background, and your feats of strength you're able to do already, which are, again, they far out perform what, what, what I'm capable of doing, although I'm still, uh, I'm still a work in progress like we all are. But what does a day in the life look like? Because you, you move from a busy medicine career. I still have that in my notes. I want to hear why you chose coaching over, you know, Mm -hmm. fitness coaching over medicine. You you had a busy medicine career and now you're, you're a very busy coach. I mean, you ascended to the very top of perhaps the world's leading online vegan fitness coaching company where you're the lead coach, you're the head coach. That's why I just inherently just call you coach Daphne, because that's how I, you know, that's how I know you. You're that you're the head coach. So what does a day in the life look like for you? Uh, so I'm a creature of habit. So my day in the life is probably about the same seven days a week. Um, I, I've been getting up at the crack of dawn for years. So I usually wake up between three 50 and four 15 and it, it just happens. It's not, it's probably a remnant of the fact that I always had to go in early and round. So being, being a morning person is just my time of day. But now rather than going into the hospital and rounding, I go down to the gym and I work out. So I get up, I have a morning routine where I do some push-ups, some squats, some pull-ups, some tricep dips. That's a given every day. Depending on what my goals are, I either lift or I run or I do a combination. And by the time 6.30 runs around, I'm done with my training and then Nine times out of 10, I meal prep on the weekends and my mornings are, I assemble what my meals will be for the day. So it's not as much cooking or preparing because I've tried to do the roasting or the, you know, get my protein, my starch, uh, my grains cooked on the weekends. I'll put everything together, maybe make a smoothie in the morning. So I've got my meals lined up and then that way I start my day between 7.30 and 8 a.m. Eastern, and I'll squeeze in my meals whenever possible. I work until the work is done. Um, In an ideal world, I would be in bed by about 8.30 p.m. with my legs up the wall and a nice book. Uh, Some days, as you can tell from my consistency post, it's not that good, but I like to, and I endorse, uh, it's part of my coaching philosophy, and I try and model that making sure I get my meals, focusing on my mindset, making sure I move every day, talking, trying to prioritize my sleep, uh, making sure I reach out to people so get my social connection. Um, And then 
finding some way to reduce my stress. And usually that's either walking, walking on my treadmill, but I always end the day with legs up the wall. So you, uh, you are incredibly consistent. And what it sounds like is that you have some non-negotiables. That's I kind do. of, the, that's kind of the, I don't know, the word that, that came to mm -hmm. mind as I was listening. You have these non-negotiables, you have your routine, and this is what you follow. And this is what, I mean, these are predictable results, right? I think you, you know, you're going to be able to do lots of pushups because you do them every day. You know, you're going to be able to probably do this long wall sit. I think longer than anyone I saw in the whole program. I, I don't know that I haven't verified that, but it seemed like it. Uh, because you do squats, you know, on a regular basis, like you're prepared for what is ahead. You're very, uh, people have always, always commented, uh, you're very calm and very Zen-like. I mean, you used to work as a surgeon, reconstructive surgeon, you're, you're used to high stress. Um, what are these, uh, I don't want to say high risk reward, but high, you know, high intense, high intensity moments. And I'm sure some of that comes with, with even your current work. And so, uh, Talk about some of the foods, though, specifically. Let's. This is something Chef AJ's audience loves to hear about. I've been hosting this mm -hmm. show for a year or, or, or more, and I've been a guest on Chef AJ's show myself for the last five years or so. I've been very fortunate for that. Uh, what are some of your favorite foods to incorporate and why? So, good question. Um, and I can start with some things that I'm actually going to be making for Thanksgiving. Um, so, one of them is... And kind of a throwback to, um, I was on a podcast just yesterday with Dr. Brooke Bassard, who um, wrote a, a book recently called Chew on This. So I'm going to make a lentil loaf, which I love. So lentils are, um, this loaf is a combination of lentils and quinoa and vegetables. So it is, you've got your protein, you've got your fiber, you've got your starch, and it is something that is meaty and chewy and tasty and filling, and it's a great comfort food. I actually learned from Chef AJ. I'm a huge sweet potato fan. So you probably see sweet potatoes in my consistency post pretty regularly. So on the weekends, I'll roast up a couple of sweet potatoes. Um, you can put sweet potatoes on top of just about anything. Uh, and I like them because you, you've got great antioxidants there. Again, they're um, satiating to me. I love the sweet taste. You can blend them with just about anything and they taste good on their own or they taste good with other vegetables. I'm also, and I think I've, sh I have, uh, converted Karen, your wife a little bit. I'm a huge salad eater. And I remember hearing Dr. Gregor talk about eating salads for breakfast. So you often may see that I break my fast um, with a huge salad. And the salad is cabbage and greens and green onions. I have a homemade dressing that I don't buy salad dressing anymore. I make my own. Um, I use some of the vinegars that Chef AJ introduced me to mix the vinegar with a little bit of mustard and tahini and some garlic. And you've got an amazing homemade dressing or dip that one, I like, I'm very control freaky. So I know what's in my dressings. So most of my meals on a daily basis, it's breaking my fast with a salad. It's having my proteins, whether it's lentils, chickpeas, a curry, a lentil loaf, um, a, a nice hearty shepherd's pie this time of year. Those are all things I love to eat and that I eat regularly because I can prep them and then eat them throughout the course of the week. Um, but I'm pretty consistent with what I eat on a regular basis. Yeah, I like that you're intentional about that. And you gave some reasons why and why you eat certain foods because they're nutrient content or for their satiety or, or how they fit into an overall meal plan and how these you know lentils are kind of a little more calorie dense, nutrient dense. Uh, the, good source of, of protein. The, good source of protein, uh, yeah. one of the best uh, cost, you know, per, you know, nutrients per penny spent also yep. lentils are, are very uh, high on that list, if not number one on that list from what I've been able to determine. Um, so I appreciate that, especially coming from someone who does have a background in medicine, someone who is an MD, someone who is a PhD and someone who is an active and current coach. Uh, so I appreciate you, you sharing that. That's something, it doesn't really matter, you know, 
who the guest is, everybody wants to know, like, like, what are you doing? Especially when you are someone who as fit and strong, uh, your, your great strength to weight ratio that you have and all of that. It's, it's insightful for someone like me as well. And someone who's going through this program, someone who is in a calorie deficit right now, effectively losing fat while still maintaining strength. I monitor that closely with my coach. I'm, I'm obviously my body's transforming. Almost anybody exactly. can see it. It's very, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a bit of doing- online posting my photos because I'm, I'm actually quite proud of my progress. I even was showing people at a, a holiday dinner party earlier this week, like fo- photos of my phone, uh, because I was proud of the progress I've made. And, and largely it's because of uh, the guidance that you and other coaches at the vegan gym have established that if you follow this nutrient dense approach and eat real food, real calories, and also pay attention to being in a calorie deficit, exercise consistently, pay attention to your sleep, pay attention to hydration, pay attention to community, all the things that I'm benefiting from mm-hmm. as someone who is honestly quite hesitant to join this program, not ego wise. I'm already, you know, champion, vegan bodybuilder, best selling author, you know, a vegan for almost 30 years. It wasn't ego thing. It was really like the intimidation factor, the resistance of trying something new and having someone tell me what to do and, and all of that. And again, not that I, I'm, it's not an ego getting in the way. It was, it was my own habits and behaviors and consistent patterns that I was fearful of changing. But now that I've changed them, whether you're talking about meal prep, or focusing on certain foods, or avoiding some other things, and knowing why to avoid them. Ah, It's been a game changer, to use that expression again. So I've had tremendous results, but this isn't about me, this is about you. So I want to know- I I do want to make it about you for a second, because I want to call out that both you and Karen, independently, were chosen as Client of the Week from NVSA last week. Um, and, And Robert, it's not an honor. Two things. One, both of you were selected independently. So there was no, we didn't talk about it. It's just the fact that you show up, you're doing the work. You, I mean, Karen is an amazing human being and just watching the progress that she's making and watching the two of you and the commitment that you've made to your health, because a lot of what we do, you know, to me, squats are a functional move. And I talk to people, squats are getting off the bed, getting off the chair, getting off the potty. So what I'm doing isn't just to gain muscle, but just like you and Karen, you're doing this because your examples to your nieces and nephews, your brother, your sister, your mom and your dad, and your great examples for the rest of the VSA community. And, uh, you know, so kudos to you. Well, thank you, uh, Coach Daphne. And honestly, if we're just being real for a moment, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this without without Karen. I mean, she set the example. She prepares our meals. She takes the time to evaluate and kind of measure the calorie intake of a given food where I was obli- ob- oblivious before. In fact, I joke, my first day, Daphne, my first day where I recorded calories, I ate a, a thousand calories more than was my target because uh-huh. I didn't add up till the end of the day. And so I was just, instead of adding up calories as I go and just kind of monitoring things, like seeing where, where I'm at and knowing that I have to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight, it's the only way to do it. It's just the mm-hmm. only way to do it. You can do it naturally like, you know, Chef AJ does when you you just naturally organically eat uh, foods that are low in calories and high in nutrition where you can just eat as many salads and such as, as you like. But that's that hasn't been my background. You know, I, I've been more of a burrito and sandwich and and vegan burger, you know, kind of guy, along with tons of fruit and and some salads every once in a while and things like that. But my first day, I didn't record till the end of the day. OK, here's a summary of everything I ate. Oops, I'm a thousand calories over my target. No wonder it wasn't working for me. I had been doing that for months or years without documenting it. It was just my behavior. Mm-hmm. Now that I've monitored it for 50 straight days. And this is not a burden, by the way. I thought calorie counting would be a burden. It is so easy because you, you get familiar with, you use apps for one, just put it in my phone. And then you know how many calories are in a banana or an apple or in an orange or in a mandarin orange or in, in a volume of berries or an oatmeal. You just know it. You just learn it after a few days. And now I've been monitoring it for 50 consecutive days. I actually just hit day 50. Today's 54, day 54. And I'm down almost 20 pounds. I wouldn't be able to do that without um, Karen setting the example that she has set. It's something we learned from Chef AJ a long time ago. In fact, I've listed it in at least two of my books, giving Chef AJ the credit. Hopefully that's that's accurate. Who knows where, where she got it from? But it's like a quote I attribute to Chef AJ. 
that says if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Oh, absolutely. And we're yeah. talking about especially junk foods. Like, I, I mean, honestly, I'm not big on on sweets. To, well, that's what I tell you, right? But I would still have chocolate bars in the house. And uh, honestly, when times got stressful, I would I would reach for them on my mm-hmm. desk. Deadlines. This book has been. I'm on year three of writing my latest book, The Impactful Vegan. It's stressful. It's tough. It's hard. It's difficult. And I'll grab for these things. I don't have to go upstairs. I don't have to leave. I can just grab a chocolate bar from my desk. I was doing that daily without knowing it and then realizing how many calories are in those foods. And I just removed those from my my surroundings. Like Chef AJ said, if willpower you know, gives gives up on you. You know, it, it, it goes away. You, you give in. You can't fight uh, willpower. You just can't. Your behaviors and habits can, but you can't overcome um succumbing to to willpower and, and feeling weak in certain moments especially when times when you're stressed or when you're tired or when you're less motivated or when you get some bad news or whatever mm-hmm. and since i've eliminated some of those things from my surroundings like she said it's in your house it's in your mouth and i got rid of that stuff and i haven't had a single chocolate bar since in 54 days i used to do chips and salsa or chips and guacamole just a snack on but I, I could eat a third of the bag of chips or a quarter of the bag mm-hmm. of chips these are six, 700, 800 calories. You know, that's a third of my daily calorie intake in, in just one of the lowest nutrient dense foods on the planet, according to Dr. Joel Furman, just barely above soda, pop, you know, Pepsi, Coke. I've, I haven't had those except for once because someone made some homemade guacamole and I participated a few days ago, but I monitored it, only ate a few. It's been totally, it's totally changed my perspective, even as someone who's very familiar with this space of plant-based health and wellness. So um, uh, thank you. Uh, I know we have lots to cover, but thank you for that shout out to to Karen, uh, who's taught me how to be coachable and has also inspired me because fitness hasn't come easy for her. You know, it's not her background. Um, she was never athletic, never in sports in her whole life. And at times she goes to the gym more than I do. And sports was always in my background. I was a runner from the day I was born, you know? I was on the top soccer teams in the state of Oregon. I, was, I ran in college. I was good. I was a better runner than I was a bodybuilder. Um, and to see people like Karen and others who are able to make it a priority, even when it doesn't come naturally to them, has been inspiring. And then see them experience the results um, has been rewarding. So uh, so thank you for being a mentor for her, too. Uh, Coach Daphne, Dr. Daphne, I want to know why you chose coaching uh, mm-hmm. over medicine after working you said you talked about four years in school another five years of residency another who know who knows how many years for phd working at the cleveland clinic and in kansas city the ymca and all this stuff uh why why become a coach why get into the fitness industry um uh, you know in the last you know couple of years how'd that come about Robert, I wouldn't even call it fitness industry. I'm, I would like to call us either wellness or pre or the real healthcare industry. So I loved what I do and I still love medicine. I think that there is a place for prescribing medications. I think there's a place for surgical intervention, Um, but the healthcare system has traditionally been a sick care system and not necessarily a system that allows us to focus on health. And it's just not how we're structured. So I spent, I mean, when I was practicing, most of the time I was helping patients who had head and neck cancer. And a lot of that was preventable. When I moved into different phases, whether it was healthcare IT, whether it was working at the YMCA, saw a lot of chronic disease, most most of which was tied to lifestyle-related behaviors or decisions. And what I really saw was if we could educate people and empower them to be healthy and live healthier lives, that we could have a way of preventing the downstream heart disease obesity, everything that we're seeing that is negatively impacting people today. So I don't, what I see what we do as we're part of the healthcare team, you know, coaches are a fundamental part of the healthcare team. 
but we have the time, we have the energy, we have the training to focus on lifestyle, which I think has been one reason why I love going to ACLM because those are my people. Um, but spending 30 minutes in a coaching conversation is more time than I would get talking about nutrition, talking about movement, talking about stress. I couldn't do that in the clinic because I am not compensated to do that in clinic. And I want to have people be healthy. There's, we are not going to change the trajectory of what we're spending in the United States by focusing on pills, potions, and procedures. And I know you hear that from your guests all the time. If we flip the paradigm around and we look at how do we prevent disease by educating our communities about eating healthfully? If we, how do we pre prevent disease by creating safe, walkable communities, by encouraging movement? It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It's moving. It can be walking. It can be taking that walk before your Thanksgiving dinner. It can be joining the Teen Titans Tofurky Trot. It can be rucking, putting on a backpack and just walking down the street. There are so many low cost interventions that we can make to keep our communities healthy that will keep them out the hospital and keep them out the physician's office. It'll lower the cost that we're spending on drugs. It, I mean, this is the way to go. And at my advanced age and my advanced perspective as to where I could have the most impact in, in you know, the next 20 years, because I plan to be doing this for the next 20 years, I saw an opportunity as a coach more than as a surgeon. Um, and talking to one of my mentors, you know, he put it into perspective to say that I can probably impact more lives doing this than I would with the number of people who may be on my panel as a practicing provider or who I may take to the operating room someday. So this fills me with joy. This, I don't see this as work. I see this as an opportunity to really help people help our communities get healthier and starting from little people to age 107. Um, there's so much opportunity to make a positive intervention. Well, I really appreciate your perspective on that coach Daphne. And I didn't really know uh, the answer when I asked that question, I didn't know what you were going to say, but that, that's really helpful. And it's, that's actually in line with what I talk about in my new book, The Impactful Vegan, which I interviewed Leif for. He's the co-founder, along with his brother Anders, of The Vegan Gym. And he actually, of the 30 world-renowned experts I interviewed for my book, I mean, many great ones, you know, Paul Shapiro, Bruce Friedrich, Brenda Davis, um, uh, so many others, um, Tony Akimoto, uh, people who are doing uh, Dr. Vicki Bond, who's the president mm -hmm. of the Humane League. I mean, Gene Bauer from Farm Sanctuary. I mean, the list goes on and on and on of these incredible people I interviewed. Uh, many of the editors, of which we've had five so far for this book, uh, have said that Leif's story is one of the most powerful. Um, obviously, he has his own interesting background, um, health scare that brought him to mm -hmm. plant-based diet and fitness and using that as a platform. And now he's built this great company, The Vegan Gym, which is uh, one of the world leaders in this space. And I argue also in my book, so it was interesting, just interesting to hear you say that, that when we're trying to be an impactful vegan, we want to have the, the greatest impact we can on reducing animal suffering. We have to look at what I call our strong V characteristics, uh, our skills and talents, resources, other strengths, network generosity and volunteering. Where, where can we make the most change? And so um, I think your answer is very much in line with my perspectives in year three now of writing this book and talking to some of the world leaders uh, who excel at reducing animal suffering, some of the most effective organizations in the world and individuals. So, so thank you for that. And on that note, uh, you mentioned a few things, you know, going for a, a, a run for Thanksgiving, but which by the way, I'm not part of your team within the vegan gym. You, the you can I run. I know you're, you already roped me into it because uh, Karen's doing this turkey, tofurkey trot 5k thing. Now I'm part of it too. So thank you for getting me off my computer chair and out of the book editing chair to go run a 5k with her, because that's what right. I'll be doing now because of your influence. But what can everybody do? Uh, we have, Chef AJ has a pretty big audience here. A lot of people listening. Um, 
live or to the recording uh, whenever it's convenient for them or, and, and perhaps months, years into the future finding this video. What can everybody do right now to help their health, their fitness, and one of Chef AJ's real target areas, uh, weight loss, which obviously you, you've, you've helped so many people from brides getting ready for their weddings or bridesmaids getting ready for weddings to uh, all different genders and backgrounds of individuals seeking constant self-improvement and pursuing goals and health and wellness. What can each of us do starting today, not tomorrow, not, you know, not on Monday when it's convenient, not the first of the month. We'll talk about New Year's resolutions if there's time. But what can we do right now to make an impact on our own future health outcomes? Robert, that's a good question. Um, and just to reflect back on your prior question, I'd say one other factor that is my motivation or my why. So one thing that we talk about a lot in, in the Vegan Superhero Academy is what's your why? And your why can be why you want to be healthier, why you want to lose weight. There has to be a compelling reason other than I just want to lose weight. And one of my whys ties back to my parents and the fact that, you know, you know one of the things my dad said as he, we were navigating my mom's health care and his health care and I saw them both through end of life was what do people do if they don't have a you and so my dad always said that he lived a, you know longer than he had expected because I cooked for him um, and we did simple things so I'll start with meals prioritizing plants adding more plants to your plate it, even if you may not be fully vegan yet um, having a plant predominant perspective is a great way to look at your nutrition and prioritize what you're eating in a way that will add to your longevity. And I know that will be, you know, I'm, I can't wait until Dr. Greger's new book comes out because I think it's going to be a, another great conversational piece to add to why plants are so important. The other thing people can do today is move. Uh, and what I'm going to walk through is my framework, which I call the three M's. And we talk about it a lot in VSA. So it's meals, movement, mindset, sleep, stress, and social connection. Meals is prioritizing plants. Movement is finding a way to move. And that movement can be walking. You don't have to walk a 5K, but you can walk further tomorrow than you walk today. And if you're not able to walk yet, what can we do or how can you engage with someone who can help you take the steps that you need to be more active? And so it's looking at where you are today and looking at that 1% better for tomorrow. Mindset. Uh, you know, we talked about this on our team call earlier today. What happens here is sometimes the biggest obstacle for us to doing anything. And finding a way to remove your limiting beliefs. It's not that, and I'm a huge Colin O'Brady fan because I love how he always said, you can't do it yet, or you're not there yet. It's not that you can't, it's just that you need to identify what do I need to do to chart the path to get there. And so mindset is so key and reframing those barriers. You know, Robert, you can start VSA tomorrow because you're, this is your life. You're not, you don't need to delay getting off the road, slowing down. That's not going to happen. And so how do you make this part of how you live? And there's so many things that go into mindset from our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with food, our relationship with others, but that is as important a part of what do we do today as the meals and the movement. And then the sleep, the stress, the social connection, the three S's, they are things that I think that, you know, from a U.S. perspective, we've often deprioritized. And I was guilty. You know, I, I used to think I don't need to sleep. And there were years when it was a badge of honor that I only got two or three hours of sleep a night. Yeah, I was, you know, I was on call last night. I didn't sleep a wink. I'm going to go to clinic. I'm going to go to the OR or I'm 
that's a, that's a, those are myths that need to be unwound because sleep is your superpower. As Dr. Walker always says, um, reducing stress, finding ways to, whether it's meditation, whether it's walking, whether it's box breathing or some way to de-stress. I love when my whoop tells me that um, I'm overstressed and that I need to take a few minutes to de-stress. And then the last thing is having conversations like we're having, you know, so how do we connect with other people? And I really feel strongly that having those connections, having that tribe, having, uh, you know, I have gal pals that I know I can reach out to if I need to at any point in time, those lifelines are key. And that community is as important to me as what I'm eating and how I'm moving, how I'm sleeping. And it contributes to that positive mindset I have that I've got people in my corner. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And I, I took a bunch of notes as usual. And I, I just, I'll just repeat these quickly for those who are listening, uh, meals, movement, mindset, sleep, stress, and social connection. Uh, it's so much more than just the food. I know one of our, our our friends and colleagues and one of my favorite human beings in the world, Dr. Michael Clapper has that line. It's the food, it's the food, it's the food. Yeah. And that's true, but it's also the sleep. It's the stress. It's the social stuff. I know I've gone through a lot of that myself, isolated here in the basement, determined to be this best-selling author, no social connections, working late at night, or you're sometimes telling me, Robert, I'm gonna have to text you to go to sleep. Cause I, I, I sometimes wear that badge of honor, I'm not proud of it, but I'll be, you know, up until two or three in the morning working. Cause you know, look at how hard I'm, I'm dedicated to this, you know, improving the world around me, but I know enough. And I've even had those conversations yesterday uh, during the holidays here with, uh, with a friend about not holding on to that as a badge of honor and letting go of attachment to some things I used to think were, were, were hardcore or defined me as a human. Look how much I'm out working exactly. everybody out. And, and, you know, I have an anxiety issue now I deal with and have for years. It may have stemmed from some of this stuff. I was not always the world's greatest uncle. I was probably in the top three, but, um, but there was a time actually during Thanksgiving a couple of years ago um, with my nephew, who was only five at the time, you know, <laughs> I, I get like emotional talking about it. He said, you know, we're, uncle Robert, why don't you have time to play with us? You know, because I had to I had to run my, you know, Black Friday sales and all my promos and, you know, kids stay away from why I work. And, you know, looking back, what what kind of, you know, model would I set him for them and what kind of person was I being for family that it's not the person I want to be today, you know, and um, man, this is this is an, another conversation. I hope we can have you back to talk about some of this other stuff that's just so important in the holistic big picture of what health is you know you talked about the sick care system that we're in or we focus sometimes too much just on food and exercise and like that's part of weight loss that's part of health that's you know part of the picture but all this other stuff you know having friends like you said your gal pals are right the most enriching experiences for me you know i lost i lost my best friend um to covid um as you know um 2021 and I, I've made a pact with some of my other best friends of we are going to see each other. You know, we're going to do stuff. Um, you know, life is life is short. Life is hard. Life is challenging. Um, we want to make the most of it. Um, I want I want to. So I appreciate all that stuff. I want to switch gears though for a moment because we're 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 up against the clock. Um, it's Thank a you. holiday, and and you still have another appointment coming up. So maybe we can do some rapid fire. Absolutely, um, that's okay, good. Great. Um, and even when I just breathed heavily, I blew one of my sticky notes off the table. So we may have just lost one. <laughs> True story. So first of all, I've had a few guests on from the vegan gym in the past, but quickly tell us about the vegan gym, what, what, what you do there and, and why it's such a fantastic community. Um, the vegan gym is the world's best and largest online vegan health and fitness coaching company. Uh, we are an amazing team of individuals. Our goal is to help a million vegans become the fittest possible so that they can actually help share our mission and help spread the word of veganism and 
make this a healthier, more compassionate and safe environment for all of us. Thank you. Uh, my, my role there is to be part of an amazing team that helps other individuals optimize their health and achieve their health goals. And you do it well. Thank you. What are some reasons why people are hesitant to hire a coach? I know my own reasons, you know, which I shared a little bit earlier. Um, fear of fear of change, um, mm -hmm. you know, these types of things. Am I coachable? I, I talked to you about that. I didn't think that I was coachable. And here I am, client of the week, which I never thought I was I would earn. There's hundreds of people, just for perspective, for people listening, there's hundreds of people currently in the Vegan Superhero Academy. And I was chosen, and my wife just happened to be the same week as client of the week, something I never thought I would earn. Um, why do you think some people are hesitant to hire a coach? So I don't know the answer to that because I have always, so coaches need coaches. I've always looked for someone else to help me objectively understand how I can meet my goals. I think some of it may be similar to what you had shared with me and that am I coachable, number one. Um, what's a coach going to do for me that I can't figure out online or that I can't, that Dr. Google won't tell me, but I have had coaches all my career, whether it's fitness coaches, life coaches, business coaches, and a coach is a great way to help you reflect on how do I get to where I want to be or need to be. And it's an objective individual who has a skill that you may have. I mean, Robert, with all of your background and experience, you would you may think you don't need a coach, but having someone ask you to do things a little differently, and so change is hard maybe another reason why people don't want to seek the support of a coach, but I have, I've loved being coach. Um, it's, it's been, whether you think of them as a coach or a mentor, I think we all learn from other people. And that is one of the best things you can get from working with one of the VSA coaches. And we've got coaches on four continents. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm saying this, honestly, I'm not here to promote or give shout outs, uh, the Vegan Superhero Academy has been life-changing for me. I've already shared some of that. I'm down 20 pounds, almost 20 pounds in 10 weeks. That's, I mean, I'm almost making too fast of progress that my coach is having me slow down a little bit. Robert, you're progressing too fast. Um, feeling confident. I mean, my photos speak for themselves, my transformation, you know, the photos of the scale, all the things that show the results speak for themselves. Um, so it has been life changing for me, and I'm glad I did it, even after hesitating. Or, you know, I was, I, I joke that, uh, y you know, when I was a, a vegan athlete, some of these guys who founded the vegan gym were just still toddlers. Um, but that's, that would be my ego getting in the way if I thought that they don't have something to teach me. I'm not a certified personal trainer. They are. I don't run a business. They mm -hmm. do. I don't hire coaches from four continents, including my coach, Coach Daniel from South Africa, who's amazing, by the way. He has multiple, degrees in exercise mm -hmm. science has published 500 articles he's six foot four 270 pound competitive bodybuilder you think he has something to teach me you bet <laughs> um so really quickly i know we're up against we got like the three minute warning here what are some of your most rewarding moments as a coach oh boy um there are so many i think some of them stem from our VSA retreats. So every year the Vegan Superhero Academy has an annual retreat where we get together as a community, uh, you know, spending five days with a hundred plus of your favorite vegans, just in a safe, loving, caring, compassionate, competitive environment. Those are some of my best memories. Um, I'm also, you know, one a future memory that I'm working on and looking excited, excited to launch is in 2024, we're going to be launching a menopause mastery course through VSA. And one of the things that I've loved most during my time at VSA is helping women navigate perimenopause and menopause, because I, you know, I, I remember reading recently, there's an article that said menopause is having a minute. Well, hello, 50% of the population or 50 plus percent of the population, we're all going to go through this. Let's understand and let's help each other 
and let's find a way not to make it a mystery. So I've loved being able to help women become their best selves and just seeing them achieve goals that they may not have expected to achieve or whether it's their strength, whether it's their weight loss, whether it's their confidence, that has been a huge win for me. That's amazing. I just want to add really quickly, there was a women's health lecture or presentation or masterclass at the last vegan superhero retreat. And it was, uh, and men were invited to attend too, oh, too yes, of course. because there are a lot of couples that are male, female couples where you, for someone like me to, to go and better understand mm -hmm. uh, that uh, menopause and perimenopause and all of that. So uh, I think that's going to be great that you, you have that masterclass coming up. Um, I had more questions for you. Maybe I'll, I'll finish with one because I know you have a call coming up in a few seconds. Um, we can talk about New Year's resolutions maybe another time, but uh, how do you stay motivated? Like, how, how do you just keep that? You said you want to do this for 20 more years. How do you, professionally for 20 more years, how do you stay motivated? What drives you, Dr. Bascom? Like, what, what's, it, what's it for you? Uh, Robert, it, it, what drives me is what my... I never, I believe in the infinite power of our ability to change and to be the best version of ourselves. Um, I think that the other thing that drives me is hearing my dad's words echo in my head. And I would have loved to have had my parents in my life for 10, 15 years longer. And I think in a different healthcare environment, maybe they would not have fallen victim to the diseases that took their lives, but I want to help other people. I want to share what I've learned. I want to share what I love. I want to be an example for other women to show that menopause is not a disease. It's a period of life that we all get through and we can do so helpfully. I want to show little kids what it, what it means to eat healthfully, where your food comes from, why cruelty to animals is something that we need to be aware of and that you don't need to eat animal products um, to be a healthy, fit person. Um, I just want to live the best life possible so that I can help others live their best, best life possible. And that's what gets me out of bed every morning. I love it. I love it. Live and let live. Uh, Coach Daphne, it's been an absolute pleasure. I want to honor and respect your schedule. I know you've got another call now, but thank you on a holiday, a holiday week. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me and 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 be a guest on Vegan Conversations with Robert Cheek here on Chef AJ Live. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're one of my favorite people. I mean that sincerely. I just uh, I just I just love what you're doing and what you represent and how you go about doing what you do. It's been a real honor. Daphne, thank you. No, the honor has been mine. I appreciate both of you giving me this opportunity to join you, especially on this holiday. And I just want to wish you both and your families a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I'm grateful for both of you and having both of you in my lives. And so thank you. Well, thank you. You have the most soothing voice I think I've ever heard. Have you ever thought about doing like CDs to help people like relax? You have just a, an outstanding calm voice. Well, thank you. Thank just you. So beautiful. And I love that you do legs up the wall. I do too. That's one of my favorite poses. Every night. Yep. And and you do not look like you're in your 50s. So thank you and, and happy holidays to both of you. Same to you. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when Linda Tyler shows you how to repurpose all your Thanksgiving leftovers. Wait till you see what she makes out of cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes. Take care, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving.